right? So continuing this frame by frame that we were working with. Right here, we're, we're working on this frame by frame animation that is in the, honestly, the hardest way to do animation. We're doing the classic frame by frame animation that we draw every single line, every single pose and everything. There's of course ways that animate can make it a lot easier, have the computer do things for us and such. We'll get to that, of course. But to refine this a little bit more, um, you might have kind of figured it out as you also looked at the recording that now would be the part about the in-betweens. Because if we have these 10 key poses, it gives us a sense that we've got a little Tanuki jumping and it's it's all right. But then going from pose to pose, maybe we can smoothen it out a little bit. And so going from the standing pose here to the crouching down pose, at the very least, we can often put one, at least one pose in between the main pose. So let's try this. Somewhere between the first keyframe and the second keyframe, so between frame one and 25, somewhere there I would want to then make a little bit of a change so that it's not suddenly regular pose down to crouch. We want to do a little bit of movement. So uh, again, as a beginner, just what specific frame, what frame number to put it in, it's not a big concern as a beginner. But I'm going to say on frame 15, a blank keyframe. So that's F7 on frame 15 of the character layer, F7. So then obviously here it blanks out, gives you a blank frame to, uh, to start to draw. Now, I'm going to start to introduce this instead to get more powerful. Instead of a blank keyframe to start a brand new animation pose, I'm going to do F6 to copy my previous drawing and introduce this, introduce this brand new way to manipulate your drawings asset warp tool. Whereas right now, what I've drawn, if I kind of you know push and pull the pieces of it, it's kind of deforming it in weird ways. And I'm thinking about it as a character with legs and a tail and ears and all of that. Animate doesn't know that it is a character, doesn't know that it is a you know, Tanuki. If I start to set up and with the asset warp tool, a mesh, so try this, F6 to copy the previous drawing, select the little pin icon. And here I kind of put pins down on places where the things are gonna move. Let's say, for example, with this tail. If I put a little pin at the base of the tail on the back, on the back of the body there, it kind of highlights it that I'm about to work with it. If I click on it, it puts a little pin there. Okay. And then it turned it differently. Now it says warped bitmap on the properties. It puts a mesh all around it. Now let's say I then click somewhere in the middle part of the tail over here. And then at the end of the tail. So what's happening here, I'm setting up a rig in a way so that then I can start to move various parts of it so that it doesn't deform on the edges. Let me undo that for a moment. Wherever you put these pins, um, kind of creates a point. Now, the confusing part of using this tool is when, let me undo it several times actually, before I added any of the pins, when I clicked one time and I put down a pin, this is now following me. Okay, where do you want to put the next, the next pin? And it's following me, connecting here, connecting here. Well, now if I wanted to do this leg over here, if I click here, well, that's going to get confused. The leg is not, I mean, uh, the bone is not, the tail is not connected to the, to the leg there. Um, you have to kind of tell it from, from where am I putting the next bone, the next um, part of things. So if I click back on where the tail connected, maybe if I go somewhere to the center of the body, down to that leg, and you'll get a feel for it, like what's right, what's wrong. You'll get a feel of it as you kind of work with this. But I'm putting these various points so that when I start to drag the leg, instead of redrawing it, and this takes practice, but now when I drew the leg here as a little crouch and I set up bones in this way, when it does the jump part, I'll have that leg stretched out in that way instead of having to redraw it. I have this tail set up 
right, fully manipulate it. And I can, I would be able to do the tail in the, in a way that looks that I'm manipulating it properly. Obviously, I have to put a pin in the part of the tail where there's that curve so that when I move it around, it doesn't look like that. This again is a lot of practice. So definitely that undo is going to be helpful. Back that up a couple of times. I'm still kind of at the point where I'm rigging it, where I'm putting the um, parts where things will kind of rotate from, where things will angle from. And depending how you drew the character, it may be easy. It may not be easy. It's just thinking in a completely different perspective than just the drawing as a blob of something. And how you drew it, it may be then easy to work with it or not. Onion skinning. Because it's now going to go from first pose, standing, third pose, crouching, something in between. It's trying to move the head down. I had to set up my, my mesh for warping. Again, I'm doing this, I'm showing this the long way, the difficult way. When we started at the beginning of the day, we drew everything by hand. Now, what if I had shown you this at the very, very, very beginning? We might have gotten a different result. Sure. But maybe I'm showing you this and tempting you. I want to keep doing this. I want to keep practicing this at home or in the lab time and so forth. Because what if I did? What if we did set this up from the very beginning with a fully rigged character here? Event here on this key pose, okay, how am I going to, on this in-between pose, I had my key poses, standing, then crouching. Now, in-between, I've got to think of a pose here. So with the uh, onion skinning on, let's see, how can I manipulate this? So the tail's eventually going to go up. I probably need a bone in between, and this is also the feel of it about how, how did I add it all the very first time? So the tail is up, then it's going to come down a bit. So moving it down, the body's going to come down a little bit. Legs are going to crouch a little bit over here, stretching out over here a little bit. Tilt back a little. Go from here to here to here. In between poses. For the cartooniness of it, okay, outside of the drawing, maybe I'm going to do the sort of the, you know, the, the swish lines and such. Give it even more of a sense of a quick movement in between these other movements. Binding this brand new thing I'm showing of the mesh tool, asset warp tool. It's got different names as the versions go on. But I'm combining the frame by frame stuff, assets warped, the 12 principles of animation. I keep saying it over and over. I'm going to trust that you've all been looking at those videos from the previous weeks, the 12 principles. And um, this is a big one here, where now it's from 25 to 30. Well, that's a big change looking back. Here's where I do the time saver. I could take back that previous frame 15, where it was where it was first moving downwards. It's gonna come back up. What if I take this pose again, this time then change these motion lines. Because that's a big change, a big, a, a very different pose. So right click copy that frame in between this keyframe and this keyframe, somewhere in between there. Just overwrite.
you're dealing with animation, you want to play over and over what you've been drawing. And that's simply either scrubbing this playhead over and over, that's using the comma and period. But obviously the most accurate is when it actually plays. So when you can do the, the loop, activate loop, have it loop within somewhere there. And then when that plays, you get a better sense of at 24 frames per second, do my drawings look a little smoother. If you're scrubbing it back and forth, you don't get a sense of that. Your hand doesn't move at a uh, constant rate with the mouse and even with the period. Starting with that, since I copied and pasted the frame, well, then I have the ability to then change the mesh. So it's starting to come back up. Let's move this tail down here, maybe. Move this part of the body up a little bit higher. Legs are moving back. So looking back, looking forward, I probably don't need any, I could, but I don't need very much in between there. I think that movement looks pretty good back forward, then crouch back down. Let's say, okay, obviously I probably want some key, some in-betweens between 40 and 45, because it's crouching down again, copy that previous frame perhaps, but maybe here, from here to here, I would draw an in-between, between 40 and 45, draw a little bit there to connect that pose with that pose. It's a very big leap from there to there. So that'd be other hand, that would be either hand drawing it or altering it with the mesh to, for the practice with the mesh. Fill in colors, colors. I need to go back to my previous frame where I had my inner color. So grab that color. So between 40 and 45, F6 to copy the previous frame, then grab the uh, asset warp, click on it to select it, and then start to add again the um, rigging. Now, this is a very cool tool, of course, but the complication of it is you might think, well, I'll, I'll just add a whole bunch of possible places where everything's gonna move. And um, you could, but then the uh, problem gets more points to warp, more memory, more processing power, et cetera. Software like Animate and all of these engines and such, they definitely work better when you've got better computers, more, more uh, RAM, better CPU, all of that stuff. So when, when is it, and is it, um, just enough points? When is it not enough? That also comes with experience. Have to refine that, of course. This is all version one. But going from here to a little bit of leap, the higher up for the in between, for the smoothness of it.
So the big idea is starting with these key poses, the big splashy drawings that then get refined with in-betweens. Obviously still very messy. This is a version 0 0.001. And then I refine it more and more and more and more in practice. It's even better and better. But we're getting to the end of things today. So I'm going to end the recorder at this point. If you want to stay for a little bit of lab time, I can stay at until three. Then I have to get to my other class. And then if not, we've also got more to learn and practice on Wednesday. And then on Wednesday, we can do lab until 3.30. If you got the software at home, practice at home. Now, all of this is coming from the week five resources, that very first key to Morpher Studio. Play it with sound if, if uh, when, when you can. There's another version of nine minutes with just another perspective on the same sort of thing. I've got a couple of videos here that go into more of the asset warp uh, tool. These are straight from Adobe. Check those out too. We'll do a little bit more on Wednesday with it. This is all related here. This is an even more complex way to fully create a character with bones and such. And uh, audio that we'll also look on Wednesday. So this week's all about, based on these plus more things to just practice more animation. No homework this week. And um, there'll be some extra credit that we'll put on Canvas. But this is one of our many types of animation, frame by frame with a little bit of in-betweening.